Good evening, everybody. My name is Patrick Robinson. I'm one of the co-founders of Horace. About two weeks ago, I got a phone call, and it's like, Paddy, you're not going to believe this. We've been selected to give a five-minute pitch at the IoT World Expo. Brilliant, I thought. We have to give a name. Okay, I thought, I want to talk about what we're doing. I want to talk about cognitive computing over Sigfox. Ah, they'll never get that. Brilliant, right, well, that's what we're doing. And then I get told, and the slides have to be in this evening. This was 6 p.m. when I was shopping. So, whatever. So, cognitive computing over Sigfox. What is cognitive computing? So I, I'm here to tell you a little bit of a story about the journey that I've had this year with BAM, a large global construction company, to develop something clever just for them. What is cognitive computing? Quite simply, it's the simulation of thought processes that mimic human functionality in a computer model. It typically involves self-learning systems. That, that it's all about data mining and using that data mining to do pattern recognition and using natural language processing because that's the way we think, uh, to mimic the way humans work and the human brain works. So typically today done in cloud computing. We then have the overall umbrella, which is cloud, sorry, cognitive technologies. Cloud computing is part of cloud cognitive technologies. And again, it's, it's there to emulate tasks and to mimic tasks that, that humans are used to doing. So if we look at computer vision, uh, machine learning, natural language processing, speech, and even robotics, it all falls into the cognitive technology umbrella. So where does that leave me? Well, I'd like to talk a little bit more about cognitive devices. They haven't been seen yet, but we all know they're coming. Cognitive devices are designed to utilize artificial intelligence locally. This means they're typically edge devices and they do all the big data processing locally on the edge of the cloud. These things perform tasks that humans used to do. A good example would be field service engineers going in to do periodic checks and they're listening for anything dodgy and then they're going around and physically touching stuff for temperature and vibration. These edge devices are now, and this is the story I want to tell. This is our horror sentinel. Sentinel is the world's first cognitive autonomous monitoring unit, a cognitive AMU. This thing thinks, it learns, it feels, it makes decisions, it monitors. It's like having an engineer with his hand and his ear on every piece of equipment. What can we use it on? Virtually anything with a motor. We've designed this, the first cognitive AMU, to run on anything that has a motor, whether it's HVAC plants, electrical infrastructure, gas infrastructure, water infrastructure. It's a cheap way of monitoring for an early warning system. And for, it's an early way of identifying equipment failure. This is the particular project that we're live on now. The alpha units have completed field trials. The algorithms have worked better than expected. We typically use various middleware in the cloud to do full integration into BAM's back office, which is Autodesk. This allows us to do a red amber uh, trouble ticketing system. It's something that the field engineers are already familiar with. We're just digitizing the detection. Later on, we're going to be piping our cognitive data into Watson. So, now all of a sudden we're doing cognitive reasoning at the, at the cold face, as well as cognitive reasoning on the back end, which allows us to get heavily involved with predictive analytics, trend analysis, forensic analytics, and so on. It's the whole, the whole game plan. Now normally, I would have opened this up to the floor for questions. As we don't have time, we're up on B14. If you want to see our journey so far, if you want to see the cognitive reasoning explained in detail, come and speak to us. We'll happily show you. Thank you very much.